Hi, welcome to Adventuring for Knowledge. This is Adventure Call number one. Guess what? This is Adventure Call number two. And what comes after two, Manny? Is it three? Yep, you got it. It's Adventure Call number three. Last, Last call. call. Welcome to our podcast. It's Adventure Time. Oh, okay. <laughs> My day was very good. Thank you. Um, yeah. I was in Vancouver yesterday and I flew back on the float plane and I got to sit in the co-pilot seat. So what? that was like the highlight. He's that like, the highlight. oh, the plane's full. Go sit at the front. So I'm like in the front seat. I'm like here. He's like, no, all the way at the front. I'm like, okay. No yeah, well, I guess you fly a lot. So do yeah. they see you all the time? No, I no. Mean, it's just a it was luck. just, he's like, yeah, when it's full, somebody can fly and sit in the that co-pilot so cool. seat. So yeah, that was definitely a highlight yeah. yeah all right i think the noise is good so we're gonna start okay so hello everyone welcome to adventuring for knowledge we're here with julie and colin could have made it yeah it's too bad he would have loved to be here but yeah. i am very happy to be part of the podcast so thank you you're welcome and brody couldn't make it either because he's got life things to do uh, but it's just julie and i so thank you very much and we just had an introduction conversation, catching up. Uh, we met mm -hmm. at the engineering competition in 2018, Rain House here in Victoria, BC. Yeah, that's right. We were admiring your submarine. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, I've been investigating everything about you guys, and I think you guys are fascinating. Thank and you. I want to, and I, Brody wants, and I would like to know everything about you with regards to your up bringings, your adventures, what motivates you to do all of these adventurous things and your your current adventure that you're experiencing a startup. And so I'll let you take the floor from here and Oh well, just that's a about... very open ended question. <laughs> where do you want me <laughs> to so start? You, yeah. I guess um where did you grow up where um, and then where did you meet Colin? That, okay. That'll be the first. Um, so my dad was in the Air Force, so mm -hmm. we moved around a lot. Here, uh, Canadian Air Canadian Force. Canadian Air Force. My mom's German, though, so I actually lived in Germany for a while. I uh, went to kindergarten in Germany, so I lived there as a kid. And actually, when I came back to Canada, I had forgotten how to speak English. So <laughs> the same thing happened to oh, me. Oh, really? With, with French, yeah. <laughs> funny like it took like four months in Germany as a kid I was fluent in yeah. German it's just amazing how fast kids pick up languages it's but then crazy. yeah totally forgot English but uh, yeah <laughs> I, I managed to learn English again and things have been pretty smooth sailing um, yeah and then I guess I I did my undergraduate degree in Hamilton at McMaster University and then I came to Victoria for my graduate degree and, and after what, what did you study um, I did my undergraduate in biology and psychology Mm -hmm. and then my graduate degree in molecular biology. So wow. I was researching a rare genetic disorder called Gaucher disease and we Gaucher. were looking to create a, a therapeutic because it, it's an enzyme replacement therapy mm -hmm. treatment which is very costly. So we were yeah. looking at a, a more affordable way to manufacture the enzyme to yeah. produce it. Interesting. And uh, I really liked the business side of science of, uh, you know, developing and discovering something in the lab and then, um, you know, seeing the applications in the real world. So after I finished my master's, I worked in technology transfer at the University of Victoria. And then I moved to Vancouver and I spent some time um, working in venture capital and then in business mm -hmm. development in the biotech industry. And it's in Vancouver where I met Colin. Um, <laughs> we were um, doing the uh, the sun run the you know 50,000 people go and run it every summer and we were waiting at the same bus stop to catch a bus to go downtown to yeah. start the race and all how long is this race it's 10 kilometers. Oh, it's not that yeah, long. no, yeah. it's not. It's not that long. Um, they actually, on Sunday, they're having the Times colonists to yeah. race here. So this similar thing, but yeah. in Victoria, and we're doing it as a family with our four and our eight-year-old. So our four-year-old is going to run 10 kilometers. <laughs> so, <laughs> but amazing. he loves to run. So I think he can yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so anyways, Colin and I had time to talk and we just hit it off and um, I guess the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> When was that? How long ago? That was in 2003. 2003, yeah. So we have been together for 16 years now. And, wait, and were you very into physical activity at the, at the time? Not to the same extent Colin was, but mm -hmm. I did enjoy like, going out into the mountains, doing some backcountry skiing and yeah. some snowboarding and just kayaking and yeah. things, but at a very, you know, weekend sort of level, yeah. whereas Colin had been on a number of expeditions already. Really? Mm -hmm. How old are you guys apart? Uh, he is three years older than three me. Three years? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so you met Colin in Vancouver in 2003. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you you were in a, you were studying. You already had your your master's degree and everything. Yeah, I was working in business development in, in business the biotech uh, yeah. industry, and Colin was actually planning an expedition to mm. go around the world by human power. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, you know, really inspired by what he was doing, and also by, you know, my, I've just been interested in expeditions for a while. So I decided that I was going to row across the Atlantic with a friend of mine, Kathy. <laughs> So, um, Kathy and I started training for this expedition and doing all the other things that go along with organizing an expedition. And then she ended up changing her mind. Oh, and, um, no. but at this, while that was happening, um, Colin was on his expedition. He and his expedition partner had a falling out. So he needed somebody to join him for the row across the Atlantic. So that's yeah. how we ended up doing it together. Yeah. So and at this point you, you hit it, you were hitting it off before we, or? we were already engaged oh, at that okay, point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was about, um, a year and a half after we met that yeah. we went on the expedition together. And how did you train for this? Um, I trained with the Vancouver rowing club. So mm -hmm. I had a coach there, Alex, who, um, helped me with my rowing and just lots of time on the water and yeah, on the erg in the gym and stuff like that. And then just maintaining a level of fitness. Yeah. That's awesome. That is a, a new level that I want to reach. You want to row across the Atlantic? <laughs> I want to do something incredible like well, that. Well, you should. I, you know, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. Like, I think when you push yourself to, you know, you, when you push yourself so far, when you take on a challenge that you really wonder, like, can I really do this? Yeah. You know, you kind of take that step out into the unknown, but you learn so much from those experiences. Yeah. And, you know, they don't always go the way you want them to, but no. however they go, it's amazing and it's exciting. So what keeps you going? Like when you are training and when you are like right now you are doing a startup, what, what is there an intrinsic or extrinsic motivator behind the things you do? Like, does it come from your childhood? Like yeah. who, who your mind, I want to know how you guys' mind work with the guys to, you want to take a challenge. What excites you to take the challenge? What well, do you I want guess, to achieve? You know, it's the challenge itself that excites me. There's something about it, you know, rowing across the Atlantic. I mean, you know, wow, what an amazing experience. What is it going to be like to be in a rowboat, you know, by yourself for five months surrounded just by water? You know, what kind of animals are you going to see out there? How will you feel being in that isolated environment? Like, it's yeah. such a unique situation it pushes you physically but more than that it pushes you mentally yeah. and like creating a startup i mean we want to build a company that changes the way we understand our oceans like we mm -hmm. feel that autonomous boats can transform how we understand our oceans helping us understand the yeah. impacts of climate change what our whales are doing what our fish populations are so there's a lot of you know, it's, it's a big dream and, you know, there's a lot of motivation behind achieving that dream. And, um, yeah. I don't know, I just like to keep <laughs> plugging towards it one step at a time, step right? Time. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to, in my opinion, to take one step at a time, put your head down and just do your hundred percent. Cause sometimes I feel when I'm trying to achieve something incredible, I think too deep into mm -hmm. it and I get sidetracked or stressed out or something like that. Yeah. And it's just a big downer, but 
Do you find that that's your strategy one step at a time? Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes, you know, you think about these goals that you want to accomplish and they're really intimidating yeah. in their magnitude, right? And But when you break it down into achievable milestones, you know, you can see that next step, you know. I can imagine rowing for another two hours or here, you know, I can imagine submitting another grant application and, you know, and yeah. so it's just, you keep going and then you have to have the vision of where you want to go like mm. you need to know that in order to get there and then figure yeah. out the steps and then you just keep checking them off one step checking at a time <laughs> so when you were in uh, in Vancouver with Colin do you had a list of things that you wanted to accomplish within your life mm, no I don't think no? so yeah the ideas no. just kept popping in your head and you were like let's do it um I don't know. I think there's, you go through different stages in your life and, you know, maybe something you wanted to do in your twenties isn't going to be something what you want to do in your thirties. And for me, I always want, I always want to learn. I always want to challenge myself. I always want to be around people that are interesting mm -hmm. and that cause me to think differently. You yeah. know, I just, I want life to be fun and exciting. And yeah, yeah. It's something different, right? Yeah. There's a lot of something that keeps popping into my head. A lot of the times when I'm sitting at home or at work or in the weekends, is, there are so many people in this world and I find that I want to be something different. I feel like I want to do something that not a lot of people have done. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you think about? Like something unique? Um, I just want to do the things that make me happy. <laughs> I don't care if a lot of other people do them, no. but I think I do maybe look at the world differently. So that causes me to do things that not necessarily everybody would do. Like, how, how do you look at the world? Um, I don't know. I look at it like something to explore, to experience, um, to not be afraid of, to push yourself into and to yeah. take that first step. Because I think often, you know, it can be the first step that really intimidates us. You yeah. know, am I really going to launch a startup company? Oh my goodness. What am I thinking? You know, <laughs> and then you just move forward. And once you take that step, it seems like things start to fall into place. Yeah. You know, people are there to support you and things are meant to be. Yeah. yeah. So Let's take it back a bit. So you rode across the, across the Atlantic and then after that, um, what was your next ambitious plan or adventure? Well, so after that, um, we were severely in debt, <laughs> <laughs> although we got some expedition sponsors, it wasn't enough to call and cover this expedition. So we had to pay off our credit cards basically. So we made a documentary and we decided to tour it across Canada. Um, so we rented out retro theaters. We called up the media. We put together our documentary and our talk. We sold tickets and then we would show up at these venues and, yeah. um, give our talk and we toured right across Canada 20 locations I think we spoke to like I don't know 8,000 people and it was enough to pay off our yeah. um, credit cards and it was also like an amazing experience getting yeah. to meet all these people and you know it gave me a comfort with public speaking and sharing yeah. my story and um, you know I had the opportunity to write a book from that expedition which was really cool too and so you know after an expedition you have the chance to kind of review it it from a different perspective yeah yeah, yeah. You, you know through the documentary and the book and that's really rewarding too in a different yeah. way um, yeah, and then we've done a number of different expeditions. Um, our last one uh, that I wrote a book on was actually involving our son, who was 10 months old at the time. We um, did an expedition with National Geographic to um, explore the history of the olive tree. So mm. uh, we decided that we would sail a boat through the Mediterranean following the ancient Phoenician seafaring routes mm. to see whether they brought olive trees with them when they came to the Middle East and planted them in those locations. And yeah. because my background is in molecular biology, yeah. that's a great way to, you know, understand the history of something. So we were able to take uh, tree samples and had them analyzed at an Italian university and, you know, sail to these beautiful locations throughout yeah. the Mediterranean.
Mediterranean, researching olive trees history and, you know, just the archaeological history and better understanding the impact that this tree had on the um, development of the Med. Mm -hmm. And that, and your your child was ten months old at this yeah, time. Yeah, he was ten months when we started. And you took it with him. Yeah, so that was that an adventure. Is so, cool. so yeah. yeah, and that's the other thing, you know, having kids that really yeah. changes things too. And you know, figuring out how you're gonna incorporate your kids into your adventures and into your lifestyle, so that you can share these experiences with them, yeah. but at the same time, you know, keeping them safe and making yeah. sure that they have everything that they need. Mm -hmm. And then after all these expeditions going on, what was your your main source of income, if you don't mind me asking? Um, it was a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, so a little bit from books, a little bit from you know documentaries, a little bit from public speaking, um, a little bit from sponsorship, and then we started a company as well um, mm -hmm. before this one, um, designing rowboats and sailboats, and we would sell the plans and the um, robotically kits, cut yeah. kits for them as well. So yeah very entrepreneurial yeah. pursuits for like a and long time already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean and it led you to where you are now yeah so can we touch on that like how yeah. did you came up with this idea and yeah so i mean we've been thinking about autonomous boats for quite a long time now yeah. i think it probably started when we were rowing across the atlantic ocean just seeing how diverse the ocean is and yeah. you know how the currents shift from just you know one area to an area one meter farther and you know all these parts of the ocean that have never been explored and nobody will ever see because it really I mean they say it's more poorly explored than space you know yeah. only five percent of the ocean has been explored really? so we really don't understand it and that's because it's very hard to understand I mean it's a big ocean yeah. you get some bad weather out there um, and it's expensive to send research ships out there so we kind of started to think about, wouldn't it be cool if you just have these boats that went out there and explored the ocean? And then I'd say about two years ago, we started to think more seriously about autonomous boats. We started to think about um, creating a boat to cross the Atlantic Ocean autonomously because that's been a, a challenge that's been ongoing for like a decade. And yeah. lots of people have tried, but nobody has done it autonomously yet. Any size of boat? Um, well, it could be any, nobody has done it in any boat. There's mm -hmm. this challenge called the uh, micro transit challenge. And I think for that, it needs to be under a certain size. I think I want to say about two, under two meters. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we started designing a boat for that. And then we realized that, um, there really are, there isn't very much in terms of energy harvesting boats out there. And yeah. there's really nothing that works very effectively and can handle you know big seas and can power a lot of sensors mm -hmm. so we decided to form it into a company and um we've had a fair bit of success with it so far we've raised almost a million dollars in competition and grants um that's awesome yeah, it's it's absolutely... There's a lot of support and there's a need for it. There is a tremendous need for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's allowed us to, you know, hire some staff, move into our facility here at the Tech Park. Which is awesome. Which is awesome, <laughs> yeah. We really like it. And um, farther develop our prototypes. So, I mean, we have three prototypes right now and um, we're going to start to do some serious testing this summer um, with some end users to look at, you know, pilot pilot demonstrations showing that our boats can do, you know, certain activities. Yeah. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. We think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> and if you guys need anything, like for a weekend or anything like that, or you need help, how can people help you? Or is there like a donation center or something like that? Or do you think... No, I guess you can spread the word. We're spread always looking word. for good people, especially electrical engineers right now. So if you happen to be an electrical engineer looking to work <laughs> for a startup company, which is making cool things, um, yeah. Please get in touch with us. <laughs> and how can they get in touch with you? Oh, you can go to our website, Open Ocean Robotics. So it's just openoceanrobotics.com. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, I bet I, 
all UVic students are going to listen to this, so hopefully. <laughs> Perfect. We love UVic students. I did my degree at UVic. Yeah. I was very honored actually to get a Distinguished Alumni Award from really? UVic last year. So last year? Was, yeah, nice. it was very nice. Very nice. Well, everything sounds very exciting and it looks very exciting. I mean, we just walked around your facilities and you got all your boats. And you manufacture everything, right? Yeah, we're manufacturing everything right now, but we have a partnership with um, UBC Composite Research Networks and mm -hmm. Camosun College, our technology access center. Yeah, it's so right here around exactly, the it's right yeah. a, right next door into urban Camosun, and um, we're gonna be making our boats in composite construction with them. So we're I working. Love composites. Yeah, it's, it's so easy. It's great. Yeah, yeah, so we're working on you know making the molds. So mm -hmm. we've already sort of created the design of our first boat it'll be a, a a bit larger than the boats that you saw on there it'll yeah. be about 10 feet in length um, yeah. with a 220 watt solar array it'll be self writing um, the idea is it can go off the west coast in the big storms yeah. and just be fine yeah and that's a challenge right there it's it's a huge challenge I mean the those ocean is oh. And, and the waves get huge just yeah. you know, off the coast here. But we're in such an ideal location for a company like this yeah, because you are. You know, we've got great testing grounds, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a short way away from where we are. There's a lot of um, marine companies here. There's a lot, you know, we've got um, DFO, we've yeah. got Institute of Ocean Sciences, we've got the military here, we've got the Navy. It's There's, huge. It's, it's huge, yeah. The marine industry here in Victoria yeah. is massive. Yeah. And it's exciting to see like innovation in it. and there's, yeah. you know, marine companies here in the tech park too, which yeah. is so cool. And where do you see yourself in like one year or five years? Do you think this is going to start kicking up pretty fast or what are your short term goals? When do you plan to attempt crossing the Atlantic or... Um, so, well, the Atlantic, uh, actually, our co-op students have started a club, um, the Technology Club at the University of Victoria, and uh, Jameson started the club, and Evan is in it as well, as along with, I think, about 10 other UVic students, and um, they are building a boat right now, um, and we're helping them. It's a solar-powered boat that they're mm -hmm. going to attempt to send across the Atlantic this summer. Oh, mm -hmm. this summer, wow, pretty this, fast. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the record is still out there. <laughs> Somebody's got to cross it autonomously. Gotta do it, right? so. <laughs> and I can see this being, um, if all the research is done and everything, I can see this being very big with the, in, the, in the whole marine industry. From small uh, vessels to huge vessels to commercial vessels going around and just autonomously crossing and doing research and all of that. Yeah, I mean, I think the world is changing. You know, yeah. we're seeing autonomous technologies go into all industries, whether it's drones or cars, and the same is true for the marine industry. I mean, there are a lot of benefits to using autonomous technology. Yeah. Um, the market that we're going after is the unperson, small-ish boat that mm -hmm. you know collects data. Collects uh, data, yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The purpose yeah. Of. So you know, some of the things we can imagine our boats doing because they're energy harvesting they yeah. can go out on the ocean and stay out there theoretically indefinitely yeah. in reality though biofouling occurs things grow on yeah, the exactly, hull and you, yeah. you know you need to bring them in and clean them up so but maybe up to a year they could go out there and they just have satellite and cellular communication so they can take ocean measurements things like temperature salinity yeah. wave height wind speed they can um, listen for marine mammals they can understand our Currents, so there's a lot of measurements that they can take yeah. and um, just send that back. So we have a much better picture yeah. of what's happening across all of our oceans. So yeah. you know, my vision is seeing you know just hundreds of these boats yeah. out there collecting data. I can already see it in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> all these little boats. <laughs> And you collecting that from all of them. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah, and I mean, because they're energy harvesting, there's no greenhouse gas pollution. They're super quiet, so there's no noise pollution. Mm -hmm. There's no risk of oil spills. So they yeah. have, you know, a, such a, they don't have an impact on the environment compared to, yeah. you know, putting a larger vessel out there. And are you worried about, like, other big vessels running over your... 
Yeah. Is that a concern? How how do you manage to... Yeah. So collision avoidance and having proper navigational aids and having AIS, which is an automatic identification system that boats use, that's all really important. So um, we actually are going to do a partnership with a UVic researcher to develop a collision avoidance system, which is beneficial when you're offshore, but extremely important when you're inshore. Yeah, definitely. So um, right now we have uh, 300 360 degree camera that uh, feeds through the cellular network Mm -hmm. so um, whenever we're uh, in areas covered by cell service we're able to have that you know image of exactly what the boat is seeing which is really cool and it's something that other no other autonomous boats have running through the cell service so this would mean that you know you could go launch the boat uh, in Halifax or something like that and you can control it from your um, control room here that is so cool Mm -hmm. (laughs) well that is awesome and i can't wait to see what where it leads Mm -hmm. and i can't wait for people to to learn more about it and to get a good use in this world very much needed and i want to take it back a little bit and and talk more about um how i want to know how you plan for an expedition or an adventure like Mm. what are the things that you that you do to plan an interesting adventure like going across the Atlantic (laughs) yeah I mean I guess the first step is coming up with the idea what you want to do what interests you Um, so you know often we'd have a number of different ideas and just sort of find the one and sometimes you do an expedition and it leads to an idea for another one so for example um, when we did an expedition traveling from Scotland to Syria using rowboats and bicycles we ended in Syria and that was exploring our ancestral homeland. So Colin's parents are from Scotland. My yeah. father is Syrian, my mother German. Um, and when we were in Syria, we really loved, this was before the Civil War, um, we loved the country and we loved the olive oil. Because my family has an olive yeah. tree farm there. So we went there and I was like, wow, this is like so different from the olive oil you get in the supermarkets. And then we realized that, you know, the olive tree was first domesticated in the Middle East and there's all this history and it was so significant. Yeah. And we came came up with this expedition to explore the olive tree. So kind of one thing leads to another. And then it's a lot of research, you know, it takes probably twice as long as the expedition just to prepare for it. And, you know, you got to get your logistics, right? Sometimes you need special visas and permits, you know, you're looking for um, sponsors, you're looking for equipment, um, you know, you're planning to write a book or something like that, thinking about the, you know, storyline, what you want to do, or if you're making a documentary, you know, thinking about the script, all of that. So it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of planning, yeah. Preparation is a big part. (laughs) Yeah. And once you're in the adventure, like, what do you, what goes through your mind? Like, what what are you trying to do like are you trying to solely focus on capturing everything through the eye and noise like for example in the middle of the ocean what are you thinking Um, what goes through your mind yeah well i mean the ocean is a bit of a, a different experience than other adventures because it is so um devoid of sensory input comparatively speaking so you know it's you don't see anything except for what is in the ocean (laughs) around you. There's no scent out there. There's no other people. Um, So, and and many, often it's very monotonous, right? So you, I think, think more internally, you know, Mm -hmm. about stuff compared (laughs) to, you know, if you were cycling um, across a country or rowing on a river where you're constantly seeing new scenery and meeting different people and, and things like that. So every expedition is different. Different. And, you know, often they're, they're a lot of work. Like generally they have a pretty pressing timeline. So yeah. it's not like a relaxed kind of meander across a country. And, and there's something nice to be said about that for having, you know, the time to really explore and delve mm-hmm. deep. But at the same time, it's nice to, you know, just go see all these places and, you know, keep pushing forward and travel in an unusual fashion in some yeah. cases. Which has been your favorite adventure? 
I don't know. There's elements I like from all of them. Like, I mean, the Atlantic Ocean was definitely so unique and really, it's kind of a transformative experience. Yeah. And it's just amazing seeing the wildlife out there. I love that, whether it's like pots of spinner dolphin or fish, the Gerard fish that followed our boat for like years or months. But into the beautiful places, you know, um, in in our sailboat when we were traveling along the Mediterranean and when we went to Mani Peninsula in Greece and just meeting all these incredible people. And like so often expeditions take you off the, you know, off the traveled route, right? So you meet people that you wouldn't otherwise meet and you, yeah. it's very authentic and they're very welcoming and you, you feel like you're more integrated maybe into the culture than you would be if you were a tourist. And yeah. <laughs> That sounds so cool. I can't help. <laughs> Just you want makes you want to go traveling, it doesn't makes it? Me makes me want to go, go travel, traveling. Right? <laughs> it makes me want to go travel so bad. And yeah. I talked to before starting the podcast that um, um, the idea of woofing. Yeah. Like last podcast that we had with uh, Derek Powell, mm -hmm. he's a farmer here in Victoria. He does a lot of garlic. Mm, I love garlic. Yeah. He has 170 types of garlic. Oh my god. Tons. Anyway, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> Um, he he introduced us to to woofing, right? Yeah. I didn't know about it, but Brody did, and I and I think I want to do that with hope and yeah. just do an adventure. Mm -hmm. Do you woofing. know where you want to go? I think I want to go to Italy mm -hmm. and Spain and all Greece and all the Europe, and then go mm -hmm. down to Morocco and yeah. And I want to like. I want to do this so bad, but something is holding me back. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Because you have to step out of your life. You know, what are you going to do with your job? Yeah. How am I going to get money? Like, yeah. How am I going? Like, I want this to last for like three years. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's always a balance. You know, you do have to, I yeah. guess, think about that. And especially, you know, now we have kids, you know, you yeah. have like responsibilities and you got to make a good life for them. Right. Yeah. And, and give them some stability. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think you don't have to lead a conventional life. You can follow your passions and find ways to incorporate them into your life. Yeah. And, you know, some people like the entrepreneurial sort of no steady income. You just figure it out for yourself. But for other people, it's not the way to go. You know, it's nice to have that stability and, you know, you have employment nine to five and then you can explore on your weekends and in your evenings. Yeah, and yeah. so I think you need to decide what works best for you. Cause I, I mean, being an entrepreneur and not having that steady salary, I mean, it definitely has has its risks and it has its stress points and stuff. Whereas, you know, it'd be nice to have a healthcare plan and all those <laughs> things. <laughs> How do you deal with, with stressful, with stress in general? Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I go for a jog. Yeah. You rely on exercise? <laughs> yeah, I think that helps, um, you know, put me into a different perspective. Um, I think staying healthy is really important, um, both physically and eating well. I think it's important for your mental health too. Yeah. You know, having friends, people you can talk to, um, share your problems with. Um, I think that that all helps. And um, I don't know, like right now, I feel like I have a lot of things to do, a lot on my plate. And I just find um, having to-do lists really helps because yeah. I know I've written it down and I yeah. have to deal with it. And yeah. yeah, and even if it's something that, you know, I'm not certain about the outcome and I find it stressful, at least I have my plan of attack and I'll just do it step by step. <laughs> yeah. Like today, for example, because I'm, I'm going to Hawaii. Oh, nice. Tomorrow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which island are you going to? We're going to Maui. Oh, beautiful. And we're renting a van and we're driving across the whole entire yeah. island. And we're camping. And so it's a, it's a little adventure, you know? Yeah, sure. It's how long are you going for? Just uh, seven days. Okay. Yeah, so That'll it's not nice. a long time. But um, today at work, I was stressing out so much. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my God, I need to finish this before yeah. I go. Yeah. And I, I couldn't handle it. I, I swear, I was boiling. Like my, my whole body was like, just like. And what do you know. do when you feel like that? How do you get? Through I just started that? doing push-ups. Oh, see, exercise. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and everyone is like, what are you doing? And did it help? <laughs> it helped a lot. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and then it came back and then I started doing more push-ups <laughs> and then it came back. And the so, more yeah. stressed you get, the fitter you'll be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> Ah, that is so interesting. Well, thank you for doing this interview the day before you go to Hawaii. I, I know, appreciate right? that. Oh my goodness. And I wish Brody was here because I know he, he had a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, and if you were to recommend something, if you, if you had billboards across the whole entire world, right? <gasps> what would you choose to, to oh. put on that billboard? for people to realize um, or, yeah I think um, maybe pay attention to the here and now um, because I think that's so important to uh, not always be thinking about what we want to do but be living life in the moment and uh, observing what is happening and the people that we're interacting with and giving them our full attention instead of being distracted by your phone or what you need to do the next day. And yeah. I think that's, that is really important. It's, I think Aldous Huxley's book, island I, I love that i haven't read it for ages but i think there were like these birds they would like chirp here and now here and now <laughs> so that's the message be think here so. be here now yeah and don't think about the past don't think about the future well you can think about those things yeah. and reflect on them but I, I think you don't want to miss out on what is happening right now because you're rooted in the past or just dreaming about the future I mean I think yeah. both of those have value but you want to be present you want to enjoy life and savor every moment of it and you have to pay attention to be able to do that yeah definitely now that you have children, it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. What was it? Was it a big change in your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely was. So our oldest son, Leaf, he is now eight years old and uh, our other one is four, Oliver. And I think before having kids, Maybe we didn't fully appreciate the extent to which children change your life. Yeah. Like, so, for example, we planned our expedition, Olive Odyssey, which was researching the history of the olive tree. And we ended up doing it in a sailboat because we made that accommodation for our son because we thought we'll yeah. have a you know, a place to sleep every night. Um, but it was still really hard. It's not just like bringing along this extra 10 pound bundle, right? <laughs> you know, kids are a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine. Yeah. But your mentality was still like, I want an adventure. I want to explore yeah. the world. Yeah, I mean, we want our kids to um, have the opportunity to explore and adventure and appreciate nature. So, yeah. uh, I mean, we take them outside a lot. We uh, have a, a little uh, cabin on an off-grid island and, uh, you know, it's just a little shack, but we go there and they just play in the mud and, you know, collect things off the beach and there's no, there's no ferry access, there's no cars on the island. We just take our little rowboat over to get there and there's rope swings and you know it's 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 great I think to you know sort of tra transplant yourself from the technology and you know sort of all the noise of modern day yeah. and and just immerse yourself in nature because it is a different vibe it is mm -hmm. it recharges you in my opinion mm -hmm. that's what I love about nature mm -hmm. just going out there and just taking all the life and energy and the complexity that nature yeah. is it's and, beautiful and then it keeps you motivated for whatever mm -hmm. it comes and I mean I think that's so important and in inspiring that in future generations because that is how we're going to preserve our planet by making people realize how important nature is yeah. and how special it is and making them love it yeah so. Make, nature is beautiful mm -hmm. and that's what I've been preaching this whole yeah. podcast good, <laughs> good my message wife, my wife believes that too yeah that, that children should be exposed to to nature mm -hmm. and and that learning from nature is the best yeah and is that you find that nature is where you get your energy from or what other sources of energy do you get yeah I think being in nature is definitely very rejuvenating um I think just 
being happy, laughing, being laughing. with friends, doing things that make you happy. Um, for me, I like taking on challenges. So always being stimulated, always having something that I'm working towards. Um, Do you feel like you get bored easily? I don't think I get, no, I don't. No? I don't actually. No. Yeah. I, I used to get bored as a kid, but I don't know. Do you feel like you get bored? No. Yeah. I don't, well, I, f I found myself like, I just want to do something great. <laughs> yeah, you want to do something great. Something great. And what, yeah. what, what is great in your definition? In my definition, something great is something that motivates me to be a better person and to take my skills mm -hmm. and apply them to better this world. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So to really make an impact. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. To make an impact in this world. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my main sources of energy. Trying, trying to make an impact in this world. Mm -hmm. And also thinking about children. Mm -hmm. I want my children to have the tools to make an impact in this world as well. Yeah. Do you think that your children are following the, the footsteps that you and Colin has? I don't know. I guess it depends, you know, what you, how you define those footsteps, right? Yeah. We want them to be independent thinkers. We want yeah. them to be respectful of others and the environment. Um, we want them to be curious and to be brave and to go out there and follow their dreams. So I think children are, to be perfectly honest, inherently like that you know yeah. children just go out there and they do they things no yeah they... they don't have this preconceived notion of oh i can't do that yeah, right it's when we become older that yeah. boundaries are starting to set place in our whole environment yeah exactly so how do you take those boundaries down that's the question i think we can learn from our children <laughs> <laughs> learn from our children how to think yeah i agree do you find you, you reflect a lot? Like when you go home, like do you have a diary or? I used to keep a journal. I write in it every morning, but I haven't for about a year or so. Um, and I, I used to meditate as well. I did for a few years also yeah. in the morning, but I, I haven't. I've sort of stopped doing that for about the last two months or so. And I miss it. I, I like yeah. meditating. Not that I reflect when I meditate, but I just find <laughs> it gives me like a, a peacefulness and it gives me maybe more control over my thoughts. Yeah. So, cause you know, your mind kind of your runs mind. crazy sometimes, yeah, right? So there's being, so much going on yeah. in your mind. And medit I, I, I still I still have to push myself into meditation, but I do reflect a lot. I find do myself. Do you? Yeah. yeah. And I guess it is kind of meditation. Yeah. I'm so what do you reflect on, on? I just reflect on how my day was, yeah. interactions I had with other people. Yeah. What do I want to learn from experiences that happened throughout the day? What are my goals? I think... Most of the time, I think about what are my goals, yeah. my short-term goals. And do you write it down, or do you... I feel like once I think about it, it's always there. Okay. It's like... So what are your short-term goals? <laughs> well, you see, um, what happened is um, Hope's parents came over, mm -hmm. and they are staying with us oh. for the whole summer. Okay, where did they come from? Mexico. Okay. Yeah, so... They've been playing. They've been uh, playing a lot of. I feel like I've been exposed to a lot of extrinsic ideas. Yeah. From them, you know, and they've given us some good ideas. I mean, we applied for Hope's permanent residency. Oh, that's exciting. So she's gonna become Canadian. Wow. And I think my short-term goals is that mm -hmm. waiting for her to become Canadian. That is. And then after that, I feel like. By this conversation, I need to start planning my big adventure. Your big going adventure. Going wolfing. Yeah, that sounds great. And taking this podcast with us. Yeah. And interview a lot of people mm -hmm. along the way. Like you said, mm -hmm. things that I've heard from this conversation yeah. is, is that the interactions that you've had with the people is what, what you love through all your adventures. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think meeting people is a highlight. You know, you're traveling through all these different countries and seeing them, you know, in, in their homes and their work and getting exposed to all these different cultures and ways of living. It's really rewarding. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful.
And thank you so much. Thank you so everything. much for having me yeah. on the podcast, Manuel. And I'll ask you one last okay. final question. So nowadays, what do you think excites you the most? Or, yeah. Well, I think now because I'm building this company with Colin and our small team, I think seeing progress, seeing the potential for what we can do um, really excites me. I mean, the you know, 70% of our world is covered in oceans. You know, our health as a species depends on our oceans. They absorb huge amounts of carbon dioxide. You know, we rely on on them for a large percentage of our food. You know, there's tons of shipping, etc. And uh, the oceans are at risk. And I think we need to understand that. And sometimes it's the very vastness of them that makes it difficult to understand because we don't know what's going on. And you really can't protect what you can't measure. So if yeah. we can make a, a difference in that, I think that is really exciting. That is so exciting. <laughs> and for someone that wants to explore the oceans, like myself, like I find myself that I always come back to the ocean. It's my true passion to mm. sail. I'm a sailor as well. Yeah. And I want to cross the Atlantic and the Pacific yeah. and keep sailing. And what do you, recommend or what do you give me as an advice um go out there and do it <laughs> just go out there and do it uh, i mean should i be afraid like is this scary like well waves with, like, of course you do it within your skills death. yeah within your skill set right yeah. so we can go explore the ocean in many different ways you know it, if you're going to cross the Atlantic or, you know, do an ocean crossing in a sail, but you have to have the skills to do it. So just make sure that you gain those skills yeah. and, and you will, you know, with time and training and yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for everything. Thank you very much. And you can find us if you like this podcast at adventuringforknowledge.com. We got, um, we're on all podcasting apps and Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. And we have a YouTube channel now, so you can go. There's not, there's no videos there, but there's recordings. So hopefully we'll have some videos coming up after Hawaii, <laughs> our first nice. adventure. And thank you so much. And please remember to be active in your community. <laughs> Brody, come on. <laughs> Remember, remember to keep smile. Going, keep going. Remember, to, remember, to, remember to smile. Remember to be kind and respect yourself, others, animals, <laughs> and a beautiful planet. And please, never stop adventuring for knowledge. Until next time. Peace.